Okay, we've uh, assembled the stretcher bar frame, we've customized our gallery rep bars, and now we're ready for the canvas fabric. As I mentioned earlier, you have a choice between cotton and linen fabrics. If you've done much research on the internet out there, you have heard the voice of the Leninists, those who preach the doctrine of linen only. And if you're going to be in the hallowed halls of Ardem, you stick to linen. But I find that cotton is very accepting and very nonpartisan and especially kind to the do-it-yourself. Although cotton comes most affordably in the form of blankets, I really hate having to iron out all of the creases that come with it. Unless you happen to have a contraption like this. If you're having a hard time deciding between linen, cotton, which weight, which texture, most art supply houses will provide uh, booklets that contain all the different choices from a particular manufacturer. And I find these booklets very convenient. It allows you to feel and see before you make a decision. And by the way, the canvas that I'm using in this video is cotton 11 ounce, medium texture. The canvas rolls I order come 84 inches wide and as many yards long as I am willing to order. All you need is plenty of space to roll it out flat and brush off any debris. To get an idea of how best to cut the canvas without waste, place out your stretcher bar frames and arrange. Measure length and width of the frame and add four inches on all sides for the deep profile bars and approximately three inches for the standard depth bars. This should give you plenty of material to grasp and pull while you staple. Using a measuring tape or a straight edge I measure and mark clearly the width and length of each piece. I use a 48 inch T-square or straight edge for penciling in the straight guidelines for cutting. I then double check all measurements, replacing the bar frames again on the canvas if I need a visual confirmation. Remember to always keep your cut lines parallel to the weave of the fabric. Now cut carefully along your lines. To keep my cut pieces clean and wrinkle free, until I stretch them onto the bar framework, I roll them onto the cardboard cylinders in which the canvas was shipped or on which previous canvas was rolled. When storing the canvas roll, I like to take packaging tape and tape down the edges to prevent any possible damage. Lay out the cut piece and place the assembled squared frame so there is equal amount of fabric showing on all four sides. I like to begin with the two edges of the narrowest width first. Starting with one edge, I place four staples equal distance apart in the middle of the bar. Staples are placed approximately two to three inches apart. And as I staple, I pull the fabric straight left and right, or east and west, of the middle. Now grab the fabric on the opposing side and pull it smoothly over the bar and hold it while you turn the stapled side a full 180 degrees and place it against a backstop. From this point on, you will need some sort of solid surface against which you push the framework to gain leverage while you pull on the fabric to tighten it. This can be a dedicated backstop built into your workstation, a block of wood, or even a wall. I am grabbing the fabric here and pulling it toward me then up and over the bar all the while keeping good tension. I then pull the fabric towards the opposing side getting tight leverage by pressing the framework against the backstop. I now secure this with four staples placed in the middle just like the first edge. Before going any further double check that your fabric is still centered and that no shifting or binding has occurred. Turning the piece 90 degrees, I now address the third edge. Again, by hand, I pull just enough to eliminate any waves or wrinkles in the fabric, but not so much as to distort the weave pattern of the fabric. 
Now turning 180 degrees to the opposite or fourth and last edge, I use for the first time the canvas grips or pliers. Since I am less likely now to overstrain the fabric, as the other three edges are now secured. Again, pull just enough to tighten. On lighter weight fabrics, there is a danger of tearing if pulling too hard. The pliers save strain to your thumb and wrist. Place four staples in the middle, as on the other three edges. As you staple out towards each corner, you will want to pull the fabric always working out from the canvas center towards the corners. From this point on, you will keep stapling in the same pattern, placing one staple on both ends of each edge at a time until you reach within about three inches of the outside corners. Before beginning the process of closing up and folding the corners, remove the temporary cardboard holders. The fold for both the standard and gallery wrap bars is basically the same although you will want to make sure the folds are especially clean, crisp, and tidy for those gallery wrap bars, as the edge treatment will be part of your finished exhibit. The basic fold is a three-step process. First, decide how you will hang the piece, and if you wish for the folded flap of the canvas on the back to descend the vertical bar or go across the horizontal bar. Once a gallery wrap piece is hanging, I find either way to be of little consequence, as long as the overall job is done smoothly and cleanly. On the underside of the fold, I pull up tight the fabric and place one staple. To keep everything smooth, you may want to gently tap the staple flush. Then I take about half the available fabric and pull firmly from the outside corner while smoothing out any wrinkles and tucking the fabric under this fold as you crease it at approximately a 45 degree angle. You can hold this in place or place one staple as a holder. And third, take the remaining fabric and make a second fold, pulling tightly while tucking under any extra fabric, all the while allowing the creased outside edge of the fabric to come just within alignment of the outside frame edge. You will want this to be as tight, straight, and clean edged as possible. On the back side then of this flap, staple close to the edges of the folds. The increased thickness of the fabric may require your tapping the staples in slightly. Do this on all four corners, keeping the folds uniform and directed towards the opposing side. Now with your scissors, trim away any loose fibers. With the corners folded, I now take the extra fabric and pin it down with a few staples. In the future, should you or your collector ever need to remove or reposition the canvas, the extra material will be appreciated. I now place two keys in each corner and any bracing. I then use a small lightweight hammer and tap in the first corner. Then I go diagonally to the opposite corner and tap in those keys. Then I key the third corner and diagonally across to the fourth, plus any bracing. Following the same pattern, I continue to tap in the keys until the canvas has achieved a drum tightness, tight enough to keep the fabric from hitting the stretcher bars as I apply the sizing and gesso. But I do not want it overly tight, as the sizing and gesso will itself have a tightening effect on the fabric. Overstressing can warp or bend the more narrow, underwhelming bars often sold on the mass market.